Because every core belief we have has a physical location. Say, all right, we're, say more. We're just going to jump in. Say more. <laughs> so, uh, because if you go back to the reality formula, and I'll just say it here, and all that is, is a, a formula that describes how the mind creates its own reality. Mm -hmm. That's what the reality formula is. And it says that when you believe what you think, you will feel See, as soon as you think a thought enough times that it becomes a belief, you create a pattern at that moment yep. that has an emotional component yep. and it has a reactive defensive strategy yep. component. Yep. And, and this is what gets played out on the victim triangle. Yeah. And so, and wait, I wanted to say, I want to connect it to the body. And so, and every, so think about it. When you are believing something like I'm unworthy, right? And so now you're going to, your body will take on that physicality. It will take on that pose. Yeah. And what's even more subtle about it is that we don't even, we normally, or at least I don't know, I don't typically think in overt ways, like I'm not worthy. I think in terms of more of a projection, which is they don't like me or they can see this thing about me or like, I don't, like it, it, it usually is a little bit more subtle, nuanced, less obvious. You know, I don't, I don't have it like, oh, I'm not worthy. Or sometimes I think, exactly. oh, Exactly, well, because that. it's a pattern. Yes, yes. See, when it becomes a pattern, you can enter it at any place. You yes. can enter it on the feeling level, you can enter it on the reactive level. Yes. But, but it's all part of a whole, and it all starts with a belief that you've thought, that that a thought that you've believed, or actually it could you could even say it's a belief that gets triggered that you've downloaded from your lineage. Yes. And we don't even know we've downloaded. It's just like hardwired so, into our system. So we can't recognize it. Yeah. We just are reacting out of it, thinking yeah. that's reality. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking that it's the other person, thinking and, that it's the circumstance, thinking that this it's is what, what it is. This is the definition of what victim consciousness is. Great. Let's, let's jump. So, so do you want to um, I'm so excited for this conversation. I can't even, because I, I personally think that this structure, this triangle, um, this uh, It's the shadow trinity. It's the shadow trinity. Love that. So this yeah. shadow trinity. Which is necessary and essential for, yes. our, for our moving up to the next level. Yeah, our growth, for sure. Our growth, it, it has to happen. But it is the reason why we suffer. It's the reason why our relationships don't work. It's the reason why we're, it, and it's our unconsciousness around it that has us like recapitulate and redo the same uh, circumstance, the same thing over and over and over again. Do, do you want to, I, I will introduce you, by the way, I'll introduce you like verbal, like not verbally, but like in, but if you want to tell us a little bit about who you are. I grew Great. up in the Appalachian Mountains, and I, uh, my mom was, um, she studied metaphysics, her mother studied metaphysics, and so, so I had that lineage come through, and at the same time, I had the, the, the tenant farmer ancestry that, that came down through total dysfunction, Appalachian style, with uh, alcoholism and, and uh, incest and sexual abuse, uh, well, incest and... Um, uh, rage and all of that was part of that my father my cake so i have these two lineage belief systems mm. that were affecting my life and that they that has been the the perfect medium for the work i share because basically what i've done all my life i was led to uh as into mental health i was led into mental health i did that brought in family systems began to end then I found the victim triangle in the 70s that Cartman had it, he was uh, he had pretty well just composed that Dr. Stephen Cartman uh, and um, when I got a hold of that diagram that of the of the upside down triangle and the three defense strategies that all humans 
react out of. It's part of that, it's part of that pattern that I just mentioned about a belief system. Um, when I got a hold of that, I began to apply to my life. It was so obviously applicable, but but it was in the fresh stages. He had basically recognized that these are the roles that are played in any drama. And then he began to notice that it happened in life as well. All stories have these three, you know, the protagonist, the antagonist and et cetera. So for people who don't know what the Cartman's, you know, drama triangle is, do you want to give like a little, you know, I actually have a, a, a picture of it. You want to see it? I'll, yeah, sh I'll share my screen. Absolutely. I'll share my screen. Pull that one. Okay, good. Good, good. So Cartman's drama, there, what he recognized, Stephen Cartman, PhD, he um, I just, he put this tool in our hands in, uh, at that point. And I was one of the early receivers of it. Hmm. And uh, so I have um, taken it into the trenches in my work with people. I've been working with people 40 years. So I've been able to work with people in generations. Now, now the fourth generation of families that I've worked with are being born. So, so I've worked with three generations and gotten to see how we pan down our lineage beliefs and all of that. But these are the three roles. Whenever we take on a story about who we are, we, and that is limiting, that is less than who we are, that, that, and we all do because we come geared to do that. We come downloaded with a program that comes through the lineage system of our mothers and fathers mm -hmm. when we when that lineage comes through we it, it puts us in a place of fear it's it's limiting beliefs it's all based in fear and when we feel afraid we start thinking how am i going to survive and these are the three roles that mm -hmm. we play mm -hmm. from that place of mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of and and the first one at the bottom is the victim of course, this is what triggers the whole thing, but it's also a defense strategy in and of itself. Because you think about, so it's the, the rationale for the victim is sort of like, if I am weak, it, it's, the, it's, the pup, it's the puppy who rolls over on his back and puts his legs up and exposes his belly to the big dog in order and, and begging for, you know, spare me. Don't hurt me, don't bite me. And it works pretty well. Mm -hmm. And in humanity, it works especially well. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. because there's a big uh we in, in our our image of ourselves as being compassionate human beings we have these shoulds about what that has to look like and so we actually look for people that we can see as needing our comfort mm -hmm. and this is a, another defense strategy this is the rescuer mm -hmm. So the it's rescue why, it's why on a certain level I feel like babies and little ones, especially the most defenseless among us, have those big eyes. Like it literally and it really triggers the part of us that's like, oh hey, this is what I'm talking about, Anna, about how it is we come down. Yeah. These lineages come down. We cannot be in a human being bought this human body and not have a story that we came to experience. Yes. Not get somewhere with. It's not about how many people know me or how much this or that I have. It's not that is this idea of success is a mind made concept. We are here as souls, as energetic beings to ha take the full ride. And that means go down into the story and use it as grist for the mill to come back up. Yeah. So that and, and it is, this is what we're here doing. So yeah. when we begin to get that, I, I'm excited and talking about it because it's such a simple thing really, but not easy because we're no. so conditioned yes. in believing and we must be because we're geared to be this kind. So it's designed to be, so, uh, so we're gonna come into our shadow because who we really are as an energetic being is light. Yes. And so you're talking about like essentially like the movies that make up like the matrix or the, or the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the sim, like an incredible, powerful simulation, you know, mm -hmm. program. Those are, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, and part of that programming, I want to continue with this. Cause I think this is, this is literally the, the thing that we, as people go into in relationship, we're either the victim inside of this, inside of a circumstance especially if when we're upset, 
Mm -hmm. They're playing the part of the victim. We're playing the part, especially when it comes to the drama triangle, the victim triangle. We're playing the part of the victim. We're helpless. You know, that person did something to me. And that's not to say that we well, people suffer. do what they do. Yeah, they, yes, really do do things. And, that and are... here's a here's an important point there, and that is we do what we do because we believe what we think. Yes. So yes. when I believe you're trying to hurt me, which is the persecutor place on this triangle. Yes. It, that's a, it, there's a belief there that I got to get you before you get me. Yes, and there and the persecutor thinks that they're the victim. Doesn't want to that's be. That's exactly right. It's and then like, I have to, I have to throw a fist. Yeah. I have to kill or be order. killed. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm, and I'm not going to be killed. So I'll be the killer. That's it. And, and um, all, we're all on this somewhere and we can go back and forth between roles, but once we get on it, we will move around it. We don't just take one of these and this is, you know, we're only persecutors or we're only rescuers or we're only victims. No, we, we, do this on every level and we are can be different roles with different people we can yeah. be in different roles and we also play it out with ourselves for sure oh my god we'll get to that in a second i want to talk about how um there's a i want to talk about two things that there's a um uh, a gate that we enter that we primarily play that's like our our starting our gate starting, starting gate. gate position starting gate position then i also want to talk about how um when we're in, let's say if I'm in the victim role and I don't even know it, what happens is, and this is what, what Lynn is talking about, is that it's so seamless. We so don't know what we don't know. We're so blind to our own blindness, deaf to our own deafness. We can't even see the thing we can't see that we think it's the truth and it's the truth that it's the truth. So I'm playing the victim, but I don't actually think I'm the victim. Someone really did something to me. And that's not to say that they didn't, of course they did, they did, but the whole drama around it and so and so what ends up happening is if I'm in the victim role, I am pulling for trying to cast the persecutor role. And I'm also trying to pull in rescuers. I'm also trying to pull in people. So wherever you are on the triangle, I remember reading this in, in some of your uh, literature, wherever you are on the triangle, you are pulling for other people to play the other roles as well. And so You're there's a it's position. not a, yeah. yeah I would use the word pulling I would use the word um attracting great it's more of it's your vibing a vibration it, it's sort of like a, a, another way of understanding this is is if we look at it energetically it's like when I'm believing what I think and I'm feeling the emotion that goes with it the emotion that the emo our emotion is our vibrational that that is the vibrational part of us that is what it is that gets transmitted. That is what it is that goes out and vibes out here with the emotional tone mm. upon which you're living, which mm. is determined by what you're believing and thinking the most, mm. wherever that is, whatever that emotional tone is. Think of it as a, you know, it's a, I just got this image of a tablecloth spread over a table. The mm. tone is the emotional tone that we spread out over our lives and it, it sends out an energy which will attract to us yes the exact the emotional tone that matches that yes and we will engage with them and surprise surprise except no surprise that we will actually re we will create what it is we're most afraid of Mm -hmm. because if that's the emotional i'm afraid i don't want this to happen and these defense strategies are all based in fear so you can't, this is what puts you on the triangle is fear. And yeah. I, I was going to say, this is like, and, and the, uh, there's so much I want to say, which is why I'm like, I, 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 um, <laughs> uh, so Lynn, how long have you been doing this by the way, since the seventies? Yes. Yeah. So since the seventies, so 40, 40 more plus years. Yeah. And worked in my life. My family's grown up on it. My grandchildren. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we, and we been, use these and all of us. Yeah, and <laughs> and I've been doing this, this or something like this for almost, I don't know, 20, 25, 20 something years. Um, would you say that you still fall into this sometimes? Every day. Okay, <laughs> hey, he, let, let me just say this about that. That this is not the goal, guys. It's not to get off and get rid of the victim triangle. I'll tell you why. 
Mm -hmm. because good luck with that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it doesn't work that's how we know we're not supposed to do it you know it's sort of like we are created and we come in to take on a why else would it be downloaded into our dna yeah you know the the epigenetics says now that we're the 40 generations mm -hmm. on both sides that are downloaded into your bone marrow it's in your bones these yeah. these belief systems and that doesn't mean you're going to play every one of them out but it does mean that you will never run out of material <laughs> you will never <laughs> run out of what a, a fire of a, a, a firewood for the fire yeah you yeah. know the fire of alchemy which is yeah. transformation and that's what we're here to do and we do it through our stories the shadow yeah. the story is the shadow of the 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 uh, the trinity that we are yeah. love wisdom yeah i remember i remember jack elias um who who lynn and i both uh know you know, certainly know jack elias or know of jack elias he i remember him referring to the shadow i i've always been a little bit like it's like shadow it's so it's like no it's not that it's just whatever is literally not doesn't have light on it where you just don't see it that's all that that is it's not this like dark deep nefarious evil thing it's just literally the thing that's not having a spotlight on it in the in the moment and it's back here sort of running the show um the so i want to relate it back to uh, um disordered or adaptations personality adaptations like so we all have this going on and i'm going to close this out so that it can just be you and i for a moment and i'll bring it back in a, in a hot second um so for disordered thinking, the survival mechanism or their survival instinct instinct was so hardwired into us that it never, like we in when we're young, never got the chance to develop anything else. So it's sort of like this Cartman's triangle, the drama triangle, is on steroids. Like take for instance, it's, you know, someone who just left the White House. That's a very extreme version of a of a persecutor. The 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 like a, like that's a large triangle that was playing out, right? Well, yeah, and and you know, you're opening the door to a, a, a deep room here, <laughs> in terms of what where we can go here. There's so much that comes up as you say this, but. But what I want to just say is about the shadow and, and, the, and the victim triangle is the shadow of that which we truly are. It's the mind made story that we take on that it's a limiting one and it's designed to be because, because there's, we, um, we cannot see if we're made of light and we come here and all we do is express light. How am I going to know me from that? Yes. Yeah. We can't, we come to have this experience and the shadow is, is the, is the, creates the energy between the do dualities, the polarities, which are re required for manifestation. We don't come into we have right arm, left arm, we're masculine, we're feminine, we, we have two eyes, we, we are dualistic, we have, and these things are made to actually move in a way that makes them grow. They, they, this is how we grow. This is how we expand. And so we must have the gristle, hmm. that to refine against. It's like sharpening a knife without a, a wedding stone. You know, it's sort of like you need something that you can can be sh shaped by so our story which we are downloaded to to produce is is it is totally for us this is the but it's going to be the opposite mm. of what we are because otherwise it's going to be what we believe we are mm. what we believe we are based on the lineage like i said the belief lineage but also based on our parents are playing their lineages out for us right there we just come in here it's all been staged for us we we see we get to so we receive the download from them 
And then environmentally, just by virtue of what birth order, where I'm born in the birth order. Yeah. So let's play all of this. this. Let's play this out. I, I love this idea as a as a like a larger idea. Let's like drill it down a little bit. Take if I can. You, let's use me as an example, or use you as an example. Like let's play it out on an individual level so that we can see exactly what it is that you're talking about. So okay. we can use me if you want to. Give me that give would me be an great. Example. Of how I can give you a question that yeah, will help us identify where you yeah, are on the triangle. Yeah. Maybe we can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just think of, of a recent moment when you felt in, like you were in victim and, and just let's just take a Let's just move it around the triangle. Yeah. Just, so this morning, so this was you so, volunteered. <laughs> yeah, I did. Absolutely. No, I, I like want to drill it down so that people have like a, a tangible I love it. I love it. So of good. What this is. Yeah. Um, so this morning, I was literally, I was hanging out with Ken, my fiance, and he and I were talking and I was sharing about an experience I had a couple of years ago. And there was a moment in which I felt him sort of laugh a little like, like that. In that moment, I was like, what did you just do? <laughs> what did you just do? <laughs> You're judge. I felt judgmental. And we went around and around and around and around inside of that. Now he and I talk a lot, like we slow things down. We talk a lot. That was one of those like subtle moments that yeah, I could have just let sl like slip by. And then I would have been upset and I wouldn't have known why I was upset. But I just was like, I just got like sort of upset inside of that moment and what was going on. I made it mean in that moment, I'm not being seen, I'm not being heard. It's not safe for me. I don't know if I can trust him. Um, uh, I, I want to withhold and withdraw my affection and my love. Suddenly it was like that. So, so that you're, dramatic. you're doing a beautiful description. Now put that on the triangle. I was a victim what? inside of that. And I was, so, and, so and let's, I, let's, yeah. I, so I, I'm sorry. felt victimized because I felt he was doing something to me. Right, right, right. And my starting gate typically. Yes. He is was what, doing what specifically? Okay, good. He was judging me. Okay, so he's judging me. Let's just hold it there. Yeah. It just is a way to simplify it for moving it around, right? So he's judging me. Yes. All right. So when do you believe he's judging you? Where are you on the triangle? And what? Do, where do you move? Where do you go in your mind? He's judging me. And so that means what about me? I mean, like what comes up is I'm not safe. It's like there's danger and I'm not safe. So I'm not safe. It's dangerous. Yeah. Where am I on the triangle? Victim. Okay. And when I believe that thought that I'm danger that it, that I'm in danger, that I am not safe, then what is the feeling that goes with that? Uh, my my breath starts to shorten. I feel like my hackles go up. Can I, you locate it in the body? Yeah, it's like around my throat around like there's like a pressure on my chest and my heart and my stomach my solar plexus gets like really tight and it's as though my so this goes. yeah oh that is so good now you just found in your body the pattern mm -hmm. that you've tapped into mm -hmm. okay so this is really good because you're seeing where the contraction is right and so there's a couple of ways we could go here, but just for the sake of staying with the triangle, let's go that direction. Um, because really this could become a, an alchemical release for you, an opportunity to really, really free yourself of a belief system about not being safe. And how old is that? Five years old or even, but five years mm -hmm. old. Yeah. So I'm not safe. And so, so when you believe you're not safe, who do you become? When I believe that I'm not safe, I become. Uh, see it in your mind. See I you. can see it. Yeah. I, yeah. Like what ends up happening is that I, I, uh, I saw it this morning too. Uh, like it's as Contract though. 
It's it's a, if I had wings, but like bat wings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like the bat wings close up. Mm -hmm. I get like separate and far, mm -hmm. and I get like as though my eyes are looking like a hawk to see where I need to attack or mm -hmm. where I need to go. So where are you going on the triangle right there? Persecutor. That's right. So when you this is your this is your pattern when you mm -hmm. when you believe that you're not safe, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so now you, you you move to and then what happens? What happens? What happens next? How do you react when you're in persecutor? How do you react to him, for instance? My, it, I mean, it's funny. I'm talking about a thing that happened, but this isn't actually what happened. But it, like, what happened in my body that I noticed was I. I immediately wanted to just cut off and go like, it's one of those deadly, like women, fine. Okay. Like you're not allowed in you're dead. I just killed you off on a certain level. Mm -hmm. Like, and the other reaction I had was like a kind of anger and rage that wanted so, one so right to there. You're described. Me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Say no, just wanted me time. to like destroy, like, 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 overtake a table and stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're also, what you're doing now is recognizing how you're moving from per, wanting to, you, you take the, the um, attack sort of stance as a way to rescue you. Because it's, it's now it's about, I have to move attack. into defensive mode. And my fists go up, my prickles go out, and so when when so when he sees energetically sees you walking towards him in this mode, what is the energy? What's the emotional tone of that? The emotional tone of what I'm doing is. Um, uh, uh, what message is it sending? Crouched dog growling. Okay. Where if you do right. anything. So how no safe trouble. do you think that looks on his side of things? <laughs> right? And and so now he's you're sending out the energy of what you've decided about him. You're sending that out. And now let's he's picking up on that. Yeah. What is what are you likely or liable at least, or what what's a good chance of what you will see coming back from there, in terms of react? If well, he's seeing you as as a yeah. yeah with your fangs bared and growling yeah, so uh, he's either going to do one of two things. I mean, he did again. I'm doing this, but like we it didn't go like this. We talked about mm -hmm. everything, but. Just the pattern. We're talking about the, the pattern, pattern now. is like he's either gonna tiptoe and be afraid of the mm -hmm. unpredictable dog that's growling mm -hmm. in front of him. Yes. Yes. Or he's going to try to dominate mm -hmm. and fight. Oh yeah, let me fight mm -hmm. and top. So and so where are those roles? Right there. Where would that be on the triangle? The, what you're describing right now um mm -hmm. he's gonna that, that's probably yeah yeah and then or the persecutor that's you're right. persecuting me i'm gonna persecute you right back that's it and probably you're gonna see both you'll watch him go into victim and yes. then come out yeah that that's i mean this is but this is just a typical kind of and so now you're both dancing on the triangle mm -hmm. and then so then it just becomes you know, I throw a punch and you throw a punch. And well, I we said just, this, no, you said this, and so and so. No, you're just being like, so, like, and then that's exactly that is right. The way that modern is, relationships go. That's it. Or well, it's not only modern, it's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 huma it's human. It's humanities. This is the way, because really, truly, if you can also look at the, those three roles yeah. on the triangle, the victim, the persecutor, the rescuer that we just walked you through, yeah. you can look at those and see them as levels of maturity. Hmm. Hmm. It, because every, every single one of us, there's not a single one of us humans that didn't get here except through a birth canal. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And every one of us came out into this little body. We, we took on this body and it was tiny, helpless, at the mercy of, totally control. There's no, there, we, in other words, we're born to experience total dependency. Yes. And that is an imprint in our psyche. Yes. So we are set up by virtual design to know what it feels like to be at the mercy of something bigger than us. Yes.